Want to help support Juno Cigars? Two great ways to do it, smokeagoinshop.com and on Patreon. So click those links in the description below and help support this great cigar channel. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Joe with Jonas Cigars back for another review. And I am very excited to start with this one because this comes from Foundation Cigars. Nick Nalillo, master blender for Foundation Cigars, loves to tell some backstories with his blends. And this newest edition from Foundation is no exception. This is the Matapa in Maduro. This is a Corona Gorda, five and a half by 48 ring gauge box press cigar. Nice looking stick here. Beautiful looking oil sheen to it. A little bit of toothiness to it. It's got a little pigtail cap on the top. Picture on the band is a Ruben Dario, Nicaraguan poet. A person of iconic status to the people of Nicaragua. And the name Matapa comes from the name of his hometown, which literally means place of the magues. And the magwe is a type of agave plant that uh, has much cultural significance to the people of Nicaragua. <coughs> Nick Melillo always excels at telling backstories with his blends, so I always kind of appreciate that there's a little bit of something to learn every time you light up a foundation cigar. Uh, blend on this one, we've got Nicaraguan long fillers from Jalapa and Esteli. We have a U.S. grown Connecticut broadleaf uh, binder leaf. And then we have an Ecuadorian grown Sumatra seed Maduro wrapper on the outside. Much like the Old Mac of last year, uh, this does come in a Maduro and then a Claro uh, shade grown wrapper varieties. Both of the Claro and the Maduro for the Matapa uh, were grown in Ecuador with the Sumatra seed. Pre-light aromas on this thing. Hmm. Have some musty wood and earth notes. Rich cocoa and cedar off of the foot. All right, let's go ahead and get this one cut up. Check out the cold draw. Off the cold draw, very sincere and clear notes of very fragrant cedar and dried apricot. Let's go ahead and get this one toasted up, see what we can find out. Off the first few puffs, excellent draw, great smoke output, medium full to full body immediately. Got a very dense, almost chewy smoke texture coming off of those first few puffs. And I can already tell that you can already start picking up notes of that sweet breadiness that is typical with Connecticut Broadleaf. And uh, wow, I'm really getting notes of that already. Mm. Nice levels of red pepper and baking spice notes coming through. We got some sweet red cinnamon, nutmeg and allspice. Mmm. More sweet bready notes and some milk chocolate notes coming through on the back end of the draw. The retro hill is just fragrant cedar and lots of baking spices. Not super spicy, just enough to tingle the sinuses and know that you are awake. All right, let this go until we get a little further into the first third. I'll see you then. All right. 10 minutes in, well into the first third. Very nice looking burn line. Beautiful white stack of dimes, ribbed ash. Still medium full to full body. Heaviness of the smoke texture is come down a little bit. It's not quite so dense feeling, but it's still very much in the realm of medium full to full body. Spice is kind of settled down. It's not quite so intense, but still very flavorful. An abundance of very musty cedar, little bits of musty earth as well, some minerality, and some bright fruit nuances that I want to say are kind of like dried fruit that you would get in like granolas. So like dried uh, apricot, dried uh, cranberries or raisin, even some uh, bits of like dried banana in there as well 
on the retro hail. Ooh, now spice is really starting to get good on that retro hail. We get some black pepper and red pepper spice mixing with the baking spices, some very fragrant cedar, and some very rich dark cocoa notes coming through that are a little bit malty too on that retro hail. Liking the way this one is tasting and smoking, it's got good balance. The draw feels natural. The smoke texture is really, really pleasing. Everything you would expect from a good release from Foundation Cigars. So let this go until I get a little further in, probably about halfway through the cigar. I'll see you then. Okay. Oh, oh man, this is tasting so good right now. 30 minutes in. Just about at the halfway point, the ash just fell off and I actually ashed it myself. It didn't fall, I just went ahead and did it so I wouldn't have it falling on me. It was a nice looking, very white, beautiful stack of dimes ash. Construction has been very good on this one so far and the flavors are so good right now. I feel like we're starting to reach the crescendo of the flavor experience. I'm getting just a shit ton of the most multi and creamy sweet espresso. Has anyone ever had like a Cuban style uh, cafecito? It's basically you have a very sweet espresso with some steamed milk in there as well. Yeah, that's what this was reminding me of. Uh, you also have some nuttiness coming through. It kind of reminds me of chocolate covered almonds. The spice that we're getting is kind of morphed just down to a simple red pepper spice, not too much on the heat scale with little nuances of red cinnamon as well. Still getting some musty cedar. It's very, very tantalizing. It's really enjoyable. And uh, no nuances of like shredded wheat as well. On the retro hail. Mmm, espresso all day long. It's beautiful. Man, I wish I had an espresso to go with this right now, but I typically don't do stuff like that while I'm doing reviews because I want the cigar to stand alone. And uh, whenever I'm doing reviews, it's just ice water. That's the only thing I'm drinking when I'm doing reviews. But when I smoke this later, just for my own personal enjoyment, you can guarantee that I will have an espresso on hand as well. All right, loving this, loving it so far. Go ahead and get this through until we get towards the end of the cigar. I will see you then. All right, we are hour and 15 minutes in, down to the last third, just ashed for the third time. Oh, still really good flavors. Smoke texture has been pretty consistently medium full to full body fairly dense smoke texture. It started off super dense and then it kind of settled back to a more reasonable density in the smoke texture. Flavors now in the back third, still got lots of espresso, more dark chocolate notes starting to move, uh, move its way into the forefront, more nuttiness and starting to get hints of some subtle black licorice candy. A lot of people aren't crazy about the black licorice flavor. I'm not either, but when it's in, Small amounts mixed with other things, it could be quite nice, and it is with this as well. We're getting some nice fragrant cedar still. Cedar has kind of always been there, and it's been really, really enjoyable. Some subtle touches of some toasted granola notes in there every now and then. And right now on the retro hail. Woohoo! Okay, red pepper's starting to pick up in intensity. Woo got a little bit of a kick to it but it's kind of nice also some slight zingy citrus zest sort of flavors coming through on that retro with lots of fragrant cedar a little bit of multi notes in there on that retro as well much like the Olmac last year kind of came late in the year at least it did for me uh, and I was I think I reviewed that one I, th I think it might have been November last year that I reviewed it late in the year and it just kind of took over my interest. This one is pretty good. I'm not ready to say it's as good as the old Mac right now. This is just the first time I've had it. I'm gonna have to smoke it again, but this is definitely a high scoring cigar and uh, not anything that I wouldn't be expecting from Foundation. Every time they have released something, I've enjoyed it or have enjoyed it a lot. So 
kudos to Nick Melillo and the rest of the crew. This is been made. This was made at the AJ Fernandez factory in Nicaragua, so that's no surprise either to me. I've always been a fan of AJ's factory. Everything he puts out, largely speaking, I've been a huge fan of, and this is no exception. Definitely like this one. Be interested to see if there's any difference between this Maduro and the Claro. Probably not a huge amount of difference, but I'll definitely try it, see what I can find out. But all in all, this is just a fantastic diamond dynamite smoke. I'll definitely be picking this one up again for my own personal enjoyment. And uh, yeah, very happy that this is uh, now on the market. Thank you so much for joining me for this review. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Click that icon bottom right corner if you're watching on YouTube. If you happen to be watching on Rumble, just look for the subscribe button towards the top right of the screen. Please don't forget to follow Jonas Cigars on Instagram. And please don't forget to follow my content on Cigar Public. Hope you guys are staying warm. See you on the next review. Until next time, smoke a good one.